Hello, beautiful creatives. Welcome to Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. I'm Linda Marcel, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. And if you're an old timer, much gratitude for you to you for supporting my channel. The more that I've been sharing with you guys about this autoimmune relapse that I'm in um, and what I'm going through, the more open you guys have been in your comments across social media. So on my Facebook studio page, at, at, on Instagram, and in the comments on YouTube. And a lot of you are really struggling and feeling really uninspired to create. And you just don't know how to get started. And you're asking about my intuitive paintings. Um, so I thought this week that I would try to do something different and that I think will be really fun. On my Instagram page, I showed a bunch of these really crazy timed pigeon drawings that I did um, through Emma Carlisle's Patreon. And um, I actually videoed this whole session for my patrons and posted it there. But just really fun, loose, crazy timed drawings. It's impossible to take yourself seriously, at least for me, because I'm a slow drawer. Um, and a slow painter. There was some in this book and there's some in another sketchbook that, oh, I think it's in my plein air kit. I should have brought that up to show you. But these are fun. It's a fun way to loosen up and not take yourself so seriously. And I've been posting some video, some pictures and videos um, on my Instagram of me being out plein air painting. And some of you are really longing to do that, but you don't have the focus or the stamina and believe it, I get it. I went out for a two hour plein air painting session the other day. It was my first really truly long um, plein air painting session where I went somewhere and stood with my Peshad box and um, it exhausted me. I felt horrible when I came home from what they call post-exertional malaise. Um, I got really tired but I did really enjoy being out there. So I was thinking today I felt like going out again, but I'm still tired from yesterday's plein air event. And I thought, what could I do with my YouTubers that um, we could sort of do together and would be a lot of fun, but would not take a lot of energy. So I'm still sort of formulating this idea. We'll see what unfolds. I'm gonna take the sketchbook out that I've been doing a lot of loose work in um, so I don't feel precious about it. And I'm only gonna bring a couple of supplies. I'm gonna bring a pen. This is an art supply that I never use. So I thought it might be fun to take out something like that that I never use. It's my Derwin Ink Tense blocks. Never use it. I, I bought these thinking I would use them and I never use them. So I wouldn't feel that precious with these because I don't use them. I have an old palette here of M. Graham watercolors. I may bring that. And then I think I'm just going to bring like a pencil and a pen. And my thought is to start with, to just go out and pick some simple things like dandelions, dandelion leaves, whatever I find out there and do contour drawings. Contour drawings to me, I think are underrated, highly underrated. They're a great learning tool. They're a great way to creatively train your brain so you're not wasting time when you're doing them. You're actually growing your creativity. They're a great way to warm up for your creative practice. And even as a standalone, when your fatigue is really high, you want to create, but you can't think of, you know, you don't have the brain power to actually execute a painting. Fatigue is brutal. Pain is brutal. And a lot of times I just don't have the brain power to you know, get a painting on paper, even an intuitive painting, it's, it's, that's work too. So today I thought I'll take you guys outside with me. Um, I'm going to change into some clothes that have, that are treated for ticks because I don't need more Lyme disease. Um, and I'm going to take it out and maybe warm up with some contour drawings and see how that goes. And then maybe just loosely add some of the ink tents or the watercolor onto the paper. My goal is not to create perfect paintings of something. It's really just to get that loose, like I kind of showed you with the pigeons in Emma Carlisle's uh, Patreon drawing club session, is just to get some loose expressive marks on paper and to be outside in the sunshine and the fresh air. So I'm hoping this ends up being a good idea and that you guys like this and have some information that you can use. I'm actually looking forward to it because I don't have the energy to go out and do a full on, um, 
you know, thought out painting today. So let's see what happens. I'm going to gather these materials. I'm going to grab my art toolkit that's got some pens and uh, brushes and stuff in it. And we'll head outside and see what happens. Okay, hope you enjoy the video. So I just came out into the garden to this gorgeous patch of dandelions. So that was my first act of self-love was on a day when I'm tired and my pain levels are high. I'm not going far. I'm just setting up in my yard a few steps away from the house. So if I start to not feel good, I can um, go inside. When I'm looking at these dandelions for the contour drawings, there's a couple of things that I want to pay attention to is not all dandelions are going to be perfectly round, straight facing at you. Some of them are going to be sideways, side views. Some of them will be tilted forward. Some of them will still be little buds that haven't opened yet. Here are some little buds. Um, you know, all different sizes and shapes. This one's like a dome. It's almost like a perfect dome. So they're all different shapes and facing different ways. And that's one thing to keep an eye out for when you're doing your contour drawings. The other thing is the leaves. They tend to be all sprouting out from this center clump and the leaves are all sorts of different ways. So if you were to pick a leaf and say, okay, this is what a dandelion leaf looks like, which I will do that, I'll pick one. But then you see some from a half view, a quarter view, some of them disappear behind other ones. Some of them are folded in half. So just things to keep in mind when you're, when you're viewing things and really looking deeply, just really pay attention to what you're looking at. Now they're contour drawings, so it's not gonna matter how good they are. It's just training your eye to look and to see. And that's really what matters most in this exercise. Okay, so I'm set up with my little tray table. I'm starting out with just a pen and I brought a timer. But the other things that I brought with me, I wanted to try to bring things that would be really simple um, and that everybody would have some version of to keep it co uncomplicated. But you can use anything you have. You don't have to use what I'm showing you here. But I brought some Neo Color 2 crayons. You know, the, it just doesn't get much more simple or gratifying than that to sort of scribble with Neo Color 2s. Um, and I brought, you could bring any kind of markers. But I, I brought these Pentel ink brush pens that I've showed you in some other videos. I thought these might be fun to be really loose with. Um, and what else did I bring? Oh, I showed you in the studio. I did bring the Derwin ink tents. Um, I do have my art tool kit in case I need a pencil or anything that's in here. I do have my gouache, dry gouache palette, but I'm not gonna use all this. I'm gonna keep it really simple. When I start out with the um, initial contour drawings, I'm going to do them in a grid and I'll bring the camera closer uh, and just have it overhead when I, when I actually start. But I'm just going to do them in these grids and I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to start with just one pen and one minute drawings. So um, I may actually do like two one minute uh, two, two or three minutes, and then do uh, a couple in five minutes. I'm not sure, but just to give you an idea of the different times that you can set. Okay, let me move the camera in so you can see what I'm doing, and I'll do some timed dandelion drawings. Okay, so after thinking about it, I decided to simplify it even one step further by picking, because I know some of you have been saying that your fatigue and pain is really high, so the whole clump of dandelions might be a little overwhelming. So I thought we would even make it a little simpler by picking one dandelion and one dandelion bud and um, one dandelion leaf. Ooh, and I brought some ants with me. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then what I'll do is set my timer, put it here and hope that you can see it. And I'll set my 
my flowers there. So I'm going to have a different view of the flowers than you are. And let's see, maybe I should do, I think I'll do two one minute and then maybe a two minute. We'll see. I'll see how I feel about it after it's done. Unfortunately, the sun is going in and out, so there's going to be some shadow issues. So you're going to have to bear with me on that. Maybe the sun will go back in again. Okay, so here's the one minute timer. I should have said while I was doing this that these aren't um, blind contour drawings so you can look. You don't have to um, not look at what you're drawing. And to keep it simple, you don't have to, you, you either can lift, not lift your pencil or you don't have to do it that way, whatever you're more comfortable with. Keep the rules to a bare minimum because when you're struggling with pain and fatigue, in order to get yourself feeling like creating, you just don't need a bunch of rules added to everything. So keep it as simple as possible. I have three second, two seconds left. I've talked, talked my way through. Okay, maybe I better talk less next time. <laughs> okay, that was uh, the first one minute, one second minute, one go. Okay, I saw that I was running out of time there and panicked towards the end. <laughs> okay, let's see, that's one minute. So let's try a two minute, just again with a black pen. My dandelion greens are flying all over the place in the breeze. So I clipped my page and put a little rock on it. Let's see how that works out. But two minutes, okay, here goes. If you're drawing along with me, here goes.
Okay, it's amazing how much longer two minutes is. I actually felt like that was a lot of time to do this um, just in pen, this simple arrangement in pen. So I started out really fast. I could have taken more time on that. So what I think I might do is pull out some um, Neo colors now and see what I can do with that. Maybe bright green and a darker green. Okay, so I grabbed some Neo colors. I'm giving them a sharpen in the Swordfish triple sharpener that I've showed you guys in other videos. I'll try to remember to link it below, but it, it's got the Stabilo size, regular colored pencil size, and the thicker size, and it catches all the shavings, which is really nice. So I'll try to remember to put a link for that below. If not, it's in my Amazon favorites shop. So I've grabbed like three different greens, a pink and a purple to sort of emulate the stems and two different yellows to try to emulate the flowers. I'm on a slope, so this is gonna be tricky that everything doesn't just roll off. But let's kind of arrange our elements here again and have a go at it with two minutes with color. Let's see how it goes. Sorry about the shadow of the camera, but Okay, so if you're drawing along with me, pause the video, grab whatever you're gonna use to draw with, and we're gonna, I'm gonna hit the two minute thing in three, two, one, go. <laughs> the wind is fighting me, guys. Well, I might have to draw it crumpled up. Well, I'll draw that one going back like that, since that seems to be what it wants to do. Uh-oh, I got too tangled up in uh, trying to hold that. Trying to hold that dandelion leaf back. I should have secured that better and then started the, um, started the session. I also could have used a darker, a darker color to emphasize that. I might get a darker orange for the next one. Just gonna put my rock on there because this thing is just blowing all over the place. Okay. Grab a darker orange. Okay, let's try that one again because that kind of got messed up. So I'm gonna try that one again down here. And I'm just gonna let this blow and 
pretend that it's not blowing over. <laughs> there. Okay. Two minutes. Remember, we're not trying to win any awards here. We're just drawing quickly. Oops. Okay. Did I tell you I always go over? I always have to get like that last line in. Okay, so one more. Should we do like a three minute one? Or should I get a different, why don't I get a different medium and we'll do one more. Okay, I think this time I'm gonna play with the um, pens. The, um, what are these called? Pentel Art Brush pens. A couple of different greens and maybe this pinky color for the stem. Maybe that's enough. Okay, and we'll have a go at it for three minutes this time, if you're drawing with me. Okay, so we'll do that over here. Three minutes. Ready, set, go. My leaf is covered up. This is certainly easy for the dandelion.
I actually realized I can see more of the underneath of the dandelion in this area. And at some point in this drawing, I stopped paying attention to that. So this is shaped like that. And I think I'll do these in the lighter green. Okay. Anyways, that should give you the idea of doing the little grid of dandelions and doing the contour drawings. You can also do a contour drawing where you keep your pencil down and you don't lift it up um, throughout the whole drawing and that's fun to do. Or you can do blind contour drawings where um, you're looking at the subject and you're not even, you're just holding your dandelion out here and you're not even looking at what you're drawing, you're just looking at the dandelion. But um, trying to keep this exercise as loose and as fun as possible, keeping in mind that we're talking about days when we're not feeling well, so. So I hope you found that exercise helpful and enjoyable, and I hope it's something that you will try. And if you do try, please um, let me know in the comments and um, you can tag Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. Just, all, just type it like all one word with a hashtag. Don't put any dashes in it um, on Instagram. And I'd love to see your work there if you tag Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. Okay, so for this last one, I'm going to do a five-minute one. And I'm going to start it with my um, Derwent Ink Tense pans. And then I might just throw whatever I want to at it. Like I might throw some of the Neo colors at it. I might throw some of the Pentel brush pens at it. Um, but it's going to be like really crazy, expressive, fast and fun um, painting. And I am going to be looking at the bunch of dandelions while I'm doing it. But just loosely as a reference, I'm not going to be getting hung up on getting things correct. I just really want to have fun with this. Okay, on this one, five minutes and anything goes. Your dandelions can be whatever color you want them to be. Let's go. Oh, I thought I beat the shadow again. Good grief. I moved my whole setup, that's crazy. Let's see, make these bigger.
Okay, I forgot that I wanted to do some mixed media. I brought some, I only have 50, 50 seconds left. So let's grab some stuff and get in there. I forgot about that. Oh, I forgot to give this one a... Okay, that's my five minutes. I forgot to give that guy a stem. Okay, so just fun, you know, just really going out there and having some fun then if you want to, you can kind of go back in and, and carve into your um, dandelions with a background color. Let's get some real diluted blue here. My brush was pretty dirty, but, you know, if you wanted to take a sky color and sort of carve into them a little bit. It's not really working with the neo color on there, but you get the idea. that you could just keep going if you wanted to. But just fun, you know, just giving yourself a break, not taking it too seriously, not having it have to be art. Um, you have to allow yourself to play and your art practice isn't going to be fun if you are struggling with, you know, a life challenge, whether it's an illness, pain, whatever, grief, um, any kind of life challenge, and you're not allowing yourself to play, it's gonna be a struggle to keep up with your creative practice. You really need to give yourself permission just to do really childlike play and um, give yourself a break, you know? Not everything you create has to be fabulous. You know, I, I'll share with you, I haven't talked that much about my career and what I did, but at one time I was represented full time by about a dozen galleries with my paintings on silk. Um, I had a really good reputation for what I did. I had collectors that were constantly buying my work. There were times when I was selling so many paintings that um, I couldn't keep up. I had a hard time keeping up and I had to hire studio help. And I don't say this in any way, shape or form to be boastful. It's just that when I lost it, I lost a huge part of myself. And I, because of illness, I didn't know who I was anymore. If I wasn't kind of a regionally well-known artist, um, it was hard. It was devastating blow. There was so much grief on top of the um, discomfort of the illness, you know, there was grief on so many levels. And when I went back to trying to make art, I was really confused about what I was doing for a long, long time. I, um, I felt like if it wasn't pretty, I shouldn't be making it. I felt like I, I didn't know how to play. I didn't know how to just give myself permission to have fun. Um, I struggled. I mean, I really struggled. So um, part of what I was thinking when I started this YouTube channel, I'm the most unlikely person to start to have a YouTube channel. Believe me, if you knew me in person, I'm extremely shy uh, and reclusive. And, um, you know, I, I'm hypersensitive. I'm a very sensitive person. My feelings get hurt easily. There's so many reasons that I'm not cut out to be a YouTube person. But part of it was that I needed to learn how to play. And I thought, that if I came on here and explained to people about the healing properties of art, um, 
and how wonderful it could be that it would help me loosen up and remember how to play with my art because I used to know how. Um, before I started selling work, I used to play a lot and experiment with different things and do mixed media. But um, I kind of lost that when I started selling my work and started getting a reputation. Um, a lot of that went away and I got confused about it. So now I'm just on this mission to remember how to play with art, how to loosen up and play and just have fun. Do silly things, you know? And it's still something that I struggle with on and off. Sometimes I, it's easier for me than it is other times, but I think that we can encourage each other on this channel to uh, remember once in a while to play. It's fine to want to go out here and there and when you have the energy and when pain levels aren't too bad to go out and, and make your beautiful art and that's great and it's rewarding and it feels good but just remember you have to you have to mix the play in in there too you can't it can't all be gorgeous art all the time especially when you're dealing with chronic illness and really challenging health issues so I hope that makes sense. It's really calming to the nervous system to do this kind of art. Like just, I'm not even paying attention anymore to where I'm putting these crayons. I'm just scribbling and it feels really good. I mean, it really does. I'm sitting outside, I'm in the shade, the sun is out. It's gorgeous. I, I, you can probably hear my dog coughing in the background though. That's unfortunate, but he's coughing in the background. But anyways, um, just having fun. I'm relaxing. I'm having fun. I'm allowing my nervous system to recharge and, and uh, it's fun. It's good stuff. Really good stuff. So if nothing else, if you take nothing else from this video, remember to go out this week and um, play, you know, do some timed contour drawings. Doesn't even have to be timed. Just do some contour drawings. Just um, just go out and have some fun. Take out some materials that you haven't used in a million years and, and just play with them. It's a lot easier to play with materials that you haven't gotten used to or you haven't made friends with if you just allow yourself pure play with them and don't try to you know, create something. Don't try to create something Instagrammable. Isn't that, that's what it's about today. It's about creating stuff that you can photograph and post and put on social media and get a million likes for, you know, deliberately try to create something that you wouldn't post, you know, I'm not going to post this on social media, but I sure as heck had fun creating it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing this kind of content. And I can't wait to hear from you in the comments to see if you have tried it yourself and if it's something you'd like to see more of. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. And I hope you have a great week. Take care.